Welcome to our penultimate Jake Bakes, the last one before Christmas. It's the night before Christmas and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. I've always wanted to do that, but it has nothing to do with this episode. Today we are making one of the things I've been so excited to make ever since I saw it on the Great British Baking Show almost a year ago. It's a Yule log or a Biche de Noël in French. It's this amazing French dessert that's a Swiss roll with like whipped cream and cake. And then it has just covered in frosting and decorated like a log that you throw on the fire for Yule. And it is absolutely wonderful. I cannot wait to start this because I've been waiting so long. So let's get in the kitchen and let's start baking. Okay, so to start, we're gonna need to gather all of our ingredients. And for this cake, it's an actual sponge cake. It's, it's a little bit more on the technical side because there's no leaveners in the cake at all. There's no baking powder or baking soda. We're getting all of our lift in the cake from our beaten eggs. What we wanna have are six large eggs separated into two bowls. So I have uh, my six yolks in one and my six whites in the other. I want two separated little bowls of granulated sugar, about one third cup each. You want a bowl with sifted cocoa and sifted flour, a uh, quarter cup each. That's gonna be what goes in at the very end. You want uh, four ounces of bittersweet chocolate. I'm using 60% cocoa, melted and cooled. So you'll see mine's not necessarily dripping, but it is nicely cooled. Uh, it is still like moldable. To that, you wanna make a ganache. You're just gonna add two tablespoons of oil and just a little bit of vanilla. As long as that's melted, you're perfect. So that's all you need. This is, this is the whole cake right here. It's super simple as long as you know how to whip everything together. And we've already done meringues. So you got this on lockdown. Start, let's go ahead and add our egg whites, six egg whites into our mixing bowl. And we wanna mix these until foamy and then we're gonna add in the sugar slowly. This is gonna take between four and five minutes. And we're looking for stiff, glossy peaks. You want to add this sugar in slowly so that you're not going to overwhelm the meringue and deflate it or have it not dissolve together. That needs a few more minutes. However, while that's going, I'm going to take my egg yolks, my six egg yolks, and these need to be whipped up to also pale yellow. So these need to be beaten as well for about four minutes. And we're gonna, as soon as they start to foam up some more, I'm gonna add the sugar in and then the ganache that we have prepared. We are basically there. You can see the egg yolk is now in ribbon stage. See how it falls in sort of ribbons. It doesn't right away just drip right back in. That's exactly what we're looking for. That has lots of air in that yolk. And you can see the yolk has basically almost tripled in size. That's perfect. Then here, let's take a look. Awesome. Our meringue is good. Nice stiff peaks. Anytime you're mixing two ingredients and one of them is more finicky than the other, you want to add part of the finicky ingredient into whatever you're mixing in first. So in our case, the egg white meringue is very finicky. It can, uh, it can deflate and it's not gonna be great. So what you wanna do is add just a little bit into this mixture first and then mix very gently, really folding into the batter. So around in the middle, around, because we don't wanna lose that air. This is perfect. See how it's a little bit more airy? So that's good. That is the perfect consistency. So now I can add in the rest of the egg whites and as soon as this gets all mixed together, I'm gonna to add in the dry ingredients. Once again, that is a quarter cup of sifted unsweetened cocoa and a quarter cup of fl all-purpose flour. So I just sprinkle it in all the way on the top. You don't want to just put it in one spot. And this is gonna be harder to mix because you don't want to push down on this batter. You wanna leave it really light and fluffy. It is gonna deflate slightly, just by the nature of you actually like touching it and pulling or and pushing some of the air out. But most of it should not deflate. See how it's jiggly, got lots of air in it. We're gonna pop this into a uh, pan, a long cookie sheet with a good lip on it. I'm gonna pour this in here, smooth it out, and then pop it in a 375 degree oven for about 10 to 15 minutes or until it's springy. And if you remember, we did this on the pumpkin roll episode a few weeks ago, 
And you can check that out for more in-depth uh, knowledge sort of about how to flip it out and then roll the cake up altogether. I'm gonna pour this on here. That parchment paper makes it super easy to come right out too. And be careful, this batter is dangerously delicious. And you just wanna smooth it out and get it to all the edges. Remember, don't press too hard on it. Just, it's kind of like uh, moving it in suggestions, not in pushes. I'm gonna preheat the oven to 375, get this in here, uh, about 10 to 15 minutes. Yummy. And we'll pull it out, flip it, roll it, get it ready for icing and getting it ready for decorations. Alrighty, so we have let that cake uh, cool down, and now we're gonna unroll it and start to dress it. Oh my god, this smells so good. And you can fill this with anything you want. Traditionally, it's actually filled just with uh, heavy whipping cream that's been whipped and sweetened slightly, but since it's around Christmas, I wanted to do something really fancy, so I made some coffee-flavored buttercream. And since it has frosting both on the inside and the outside, I want to do a thin layer of this. This doesn't want to be, you don't want like a ton of frosting because it's going to be frosting overload. Now we are going to, ooh, a little bit more, might as well. It smells so good, that, that coffee. I used espresso powder in that buttercream and it's phenomenal. And in fact, you could actually probably grab some like store-bought like Duncan Hines or anything like that vanilla, add a little bit of espresso powder to it. It'd be perfect, it'd be just like this. And then I'm going to roll this up. Alrighty. The nice thing is, is we're frosting the outside, so I'm not too worried about what this looks like right now. Set this here. We're now we're going to frost the outside, and you want to make it look like a log, because it's that Yule log. So I'm going to get a knife and sort of trim the edges down a little bit. And what I like to do, just to give it that extra, like, tree factor, is to go ahead and cut off a bigger slice here and set it here so that I can decorate it and make it look more like a tree. So I need my other frosting I made, a chocolate buttercream. Can I get that? All right, and I've let this sit a little long, so it's a little bit soupier than I want, but cover this whole thing. The nice thing about buttercream is that even when it gets warm like it is right now, as soon as it cools, it sets up really firmly because it's butter. And don't be worried about getting it really smooth because you want it to look like a tree. And it looks so nice already. A little bit more here. And you can see from over here, we've covered that up essentially to look like one piece. Um, so I'm gonna throw this in the, fr the fridge, let it get hardened, and I actually have one ready to go to be decorated. But before we do, I wanna show you how to get a little bit more true to like life bark. Look, just take a fork, run it down, get nice little, little logs. And when this hardens up, it actually looks really cool. All right, so this one has been hanging out in the fridge, uh, solidifying a little bit more, and you can see how nice it looks already. Honestly, this looks pretty amazing but we wanna make this extra festive. So I went ahead and baked some um, meringue, uh, meringue mushrooms, and these are super cute. These are just basically uh, meringue tops, just like little cookies, and then little tall meringue little, little stems. These just go together, they look like little mushrooms. So we want this to be like a little foresty sort of little log. So I got one, that looks seriously so cute. I'm gonna put this one right here. I'm going to get a couple others to put on it too. I like to decorate it a little bit more, so I want to put like a little holly berry on it. But instead of holly berries, I got a halle berry. No. Um, I'm going to use the cranberries from our pie earlier. So I'm just going to put these little cranberries on there. And then I've got some green frosting I made up. I'm going to pipe some leaves. get little leaves like that. All right, and what else do I want to do on this bad boy? Hmm, 
I think, decorate this a little bit more. It's a nice little, like, little icing. Little swirls. And this is gonna be gorgeous. I love it. Oh, I love it so much. Okay. And for the finishing touch, get a little bit of powdered sugar and get a little, get a little going. Look at that. Look at how freaking pretty that is. Look it. It's so good. I've been waiting so long to do this. And guys, honestly, it's so easy and so simple. I'm gonna wait to cut into this until I get everybody around. Maybe I won't. Don't tell anyone. Oh my gosh, that looks delicious. Oh, here it goes. Mm. Oh my God. That coffee stands up so well against that chocolate. Oh, and the cake is so dense and spongy and springy. This is so good. And here you have our Bush de Noel, our Yule Log. This was amazingly fun to make and you saw it just like anything complicated or technical. It's so easy if you take it one step at a time. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. We'll see you here next week for the final installment of Jake's Holiday Bakes. Join us next week. See you guys.